Okay, the first part of chapter four walked us through the buying process. The second part of chapter four that we're gonna focus on this semester is market segmentation and how retailers segment customers into groups. Retail market segments are groups of customers who are attracted to the same retail mix because they have similar needs. Let's keep in mind that individual retailers cannot meet the needs of every single customer. And so that's why it's so important that they're divided into segments. And there's a wide variety of approaches that retailers use to segment markets. The first is geographic segmentation. Potential consumers can be divided into ge geographic regions by nation, state, or neighborhood. Have you ever heard of Big Red? It's my favorite soft drink of all time. They don't sell it in Milledgeville or even within 30 miles of Milledgeville because people don't like the taste of it. It's a very popular drink in the North. Bonus points for anybody who can find me a two liter. Customers typically shop where they live. So retailers look at this type of segmentation down to the neighborhood to see where to place a store or where to target customers. Another way to segment retail markets is by demographics. Segmentation can be based on age, sex, family size, education, income, or social class. But demographics aren't always the best identifier for retailers. Let's think about yoga pants, for example. Yoga pants are not just for young women who practice yoga. Or athletic apparel isn't just for young adults who are active. Lots of people wear yoga pants or athletic apparel, even if they're not doing the activity initially intended for by the manufacturer. Let's combine the geographic and demographic segmentation into what we call geodemographic segmentation. This uses both geographic and demographic characteristics to classify customers. Appealing for managing the store, I'm sorry, um, this is appealing for managing the store channel because customers shop at stores near where they live and retailers can change the assortment of the stores based on the demographics of a specific area. And so they use a tool called Tapestry, which we're actually going to check out here in a second. Tapestry segments United States res residential neighborhoods into segments based on both geographic and demographic characteristics. So for example, when you go to the website that's on the slide, hide that for a second, maybe, go to the website that's on the slide and let's type in a zip code and let's start with Milledgeville. You can see that the top tapestry segments in Milledgeville are rural bypasses, southern satellites, and rooted rural. Let's take a look for a second at one of these segments. When you click on this, it tells us that, in general, married couples of a single family type living in mobile homes live in this area. And this gives us a description on a little bit about that area. Um, a few things. Unemployment is high. However, many people work at blue collar jobs in manufacturing or agriculture. Religion, faith and traditional values are the cornerstones of these people's lives. Their country and love the outdoors, hunting and fishing and gardening. They drive trucks, they shop at discount and warehouse stores. That's a good piece of information for us. They can connect to the internet, but they rarely use it. They use satellite TV, read hunting, fishing, and automotive magazines. We can look up the income ranges for the area. We can look up the age and age splits for the area, and we can look at population density. All of these are very important for retailers when making decisions on where to locate stores and where to sell their merchandise. In addition to geodemographic segmentation, we can also look at psychographic segmentation. Psychographic segmentation of customers generally means dividing the market based on personality, life cycles, and lifestyles. We can group people by what organizations they belong to, by how often they exercise, by what activities their children participate in, and more. We can also segment customers by behavioristic characteristics or their buying situation segments. 
This divides customers according to their usage, loyalty, and buying responses. It follows the rule that 80% of your purchases come from 20% of your customers. You treat your best customers differently than you treat your occasional customers. And we'll talk a lot about that in our customer loyalty chapter. So all of these different methods of segmentation are critical for retailers, but we can never use just one. We use the composite segmentation approach. And this identifies customers based on a variety of segmentation approaches. So for example, raise your hand, and you can do this from your desk, right? Raise your hand if you're from the Atlanta, Georgia area. Keep your hand up if you're from Atlanta, Georgia and you're in a sorority or fraternity. If we could all see each other, we'd see that our numbers just got smaller. And so for a third identifier, keep your hand up if you're from Atlanta, Georgia, you're in a sorority or fraternity and your birthday falls in the months of May to August. We should probably have about two or three people left in the class with their hands in the air. Now, let's think about those characteristics. Let's think about those segmentation methods. What three segmentation variables did we use? If you said geographic, psychographic, and demographic, you are correct. Hopefully, it's now clear why it's so important for retailers to understand their customers and how those customers make purchase decisions. Without that critical information, we don't know where to sell our merchandise, what merchandise to sell, and how to promote our merchandise. So I want you guys to think about a family-owned used bookstore located across the street from a major university. What approaches or variables would you use to segment the market if you were the store owner?